Good day, one and all. You're watching Harv Video Audio Stuff. And today, for you, I want to find out if it's more important to spend cash on a nice microphone or to prioritise getting a really nice sounding room. So I went to the amazing Axe and Trap Studios UK in Wells to find out what's better, an expensive mic in a crap room or a cheap mic in a treated room. Let's find out. For all those times you Hey guys, I'm here at Axe and Trap Studios in Wells, UK, Somerset, and I'm in the control room, you can see it, look at all that gear. Um, we've got two mics, we've got a very expensive Perlman T TM1? Yeah. Perlman TM1, tube microphone, very expensive, about 2,000 credits of the realm, Imperial credits, yeah. and a very cheap, less than 10% of the price, uh, Beringer, Beringer. Which, which is it, Alex? It's Beringer. It's Beringer. T1, and they're both cheap mics. One is un unobtainably expensive, the other one is super cheap. And yeah, it's we're not comparing the mics, we're comparing the room. So let's do that. Our bad sounding room is the lounge slash kitchen at Axe and Trap Studios. For the recording, we obviously took the sofas out of the room and we pulled the rug up as well. And for our good sounding treated room, we're obviously going to use the live room at the studio, which has had all manner of treatment to get it sounding really good. Of course, to keep things a little bit scientific, we kept the microphone the same height from the ground and the same distance from the microphone to the sound hole of the guitar. So it was one meter up and three meters distance. Let's start with the expensive Perlman microphone in the non-treated room. Now swapping over to the live room and we're going to use the cheap microphone. Of course we're making sure that the distance and height from the ground is exactly the same as in the previous example. Kind of hard to tell from having those two longer clips, so let's now flick between the two and compare the difference. So just some initial observations about the microphones we're using. The Behringer, when we were listening to this in the control room, instantly impressed us. Honestly though, this is because it had slightly higher output than the Perlman and it was noticeably brighter. Both things that really kind of can influence your first impression of a microphone. The expensive Perlman microphone had lower output and it was definitely warmer, but once we level matched them, we found that it was really balanced sounding and really showed off how bad that room sounds. So then we set up the drums and of course, as before, we want the same distance between the floor and the mics and the mics and the center of the snare drum. And then we got the kit into the live room and obviously we're gonna use the cheap mic in the live room to see how that sounds. Let's quickly flip between one and the other to see how they compare. So just some things we noticed when comparing the untreated room and the treated room. 
The first thing, obviously, is the sound in the kitchen definitely has a more uncontrolled feel. It's a little bit trashy, you might say. I would say that also the bass frequencies are much less controlled. You get way more punch in the live room. The other effect that the live room has is that it makes the microphones sound like they're much closer to the kit, even though they're placed identical distances away. So just because we can, and because it's fun, let's compare the horrible mic in the horrible room versus the expensive mic in the treated room. Why not? And now for some conclusions, and these are just my opinions, I definitely want to know what you think down in the comments section. Unsurprisingly, for me, the treated room definitely sounded better than the untreated room. And equally unsurprisingly, the expensive mic, in my opinion, sounded better than the cheap mic. But you've got to be impressed by that cheap mic, it actually sounded pretty good. Of course, it's all very well saying the expensive mic is better than the cheap one. For me, the biggest difference was the room. It just had a far bigger impact on the end result. And as much as I love home recording, I just love recording studios. They do sound really good and they've got great mics, so they're there for a reason. So would I buy the expensive mic? No, probably not. I'd probably save some cash and record in a studio. Would I buy the cheap mic? Yeah, I would. It actually sounds pretty good. However, my cheap mic of choice is actually the Rode NT-USB. For home recording, it has the interface built in and will give you most of what you need. And that's it for now. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, then I'd love it if you did. Just hit the blob on this side and I've got a large back catalogue of videos about video on this channel of which YouTube recommends this one for you, and my latest upload will be just underneath. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.